Hello, I'd like to show you an algorithm that lets you convert any pushdown automaton to a context-free grammar. And it's not that easy to understand, but I do my best to break it down for you. So the first thing to notice is that this pushdown automaton accepts with an empty stack, not with a final state, but with an empty stack. And maybe you know you can convert any pushdown automaton that accepts a language with a final state to an automaton that accepts a language with a empty stack. So no problem with that. Then um, let's have a look at the notation. It is, is a little bit different in the automaton because of the program I used to make it. The transitions say that we have, in this case, we have an a on the stack and we want to read an A from uh, from the word and we push two A's on the stack. So that's uh, the order is a little bit different than what I used here. And if you see um, in this loop the automaton reads A's from the input string and pushes A's onto the stack. Then it does a transition where it reads nothing and it just reads an A from the stack and puts it back. And then here in this loop it reads B's from the word, consumes A's from the stack and at the end it just um, takes away the bottom symbol from the stack. So it accepts um, words that consist of um, any length of a and or any length of a bigger than zero and the same amount of b. And now to the grammar we want to create from it. Let's just have a look at the non-terminals we will get. And of course we could use non-terminals like a, b, c, d and so on. But uh, this non-terminals they um, um, they are a little bit more complicated. So this is just one symbol, but it's the symbol that tells you what to do with it. Um, if you think about it, if you have an automaton and you read input symbols, then it puts uh, symbols on the stack while reading a word. And the, the aim of the automaton is to get an empty stack. So it puts any number of symbols on the stack and it wants to remove all of them to get an empty stack. And when we uh, generate, when we have a grammar, then we have non-terminal symbols in the string and we want to get rid of the non-terminal symbols. So in this case, the non-terminal symbols resemble the stack symbols in uh, somehow. So please keep that in mind. The automaton wants to get rid of the stack symbols and the grammar wants to get rid of the non-terminal symbols. And we will have an S as um, initial non-terminal, as start symbol. And now uh, these other non-terminals, um, they resemble transitions in the automaton. So this one would be any way from Q0 to Q0. And with way, I mean you can do any amount of transitions. So you can do one transition or you can you do ten transitions. So this is in a way through the automaton where you begin at Q0 and you end at Q0 and you get rid of the um, stack bottom symbol. But um, these, uh, these uh, the symbols, they consist of um, all possibilities of states in the first place, states in the third position, and any uh, stack symbol that we have. So at the beginning, we here just have all possible non-terminal symbols that we could get from this automaton. But there may be a non-terminal symbols that are not useful for us. So let's have a look at what symbols of them are useful and which are not. The first symbol uh, resembles a way through the automaton that begins at Q0 and ends at Q0 and gets rid or pops uh, the bottom symbol. But 
if you have a look at all the rays from Q0 to Q0, these are just these loops, and there are no symbols um, popped from the stack. They are just um, added more and more symbols. So this this non-term this symbol this non-terminal symbol is not useful in our case. Then the next symbol that's away from Q0 to Q1 where we get rid of the bottom symbol or where we um, pop the bottom symbol. And anyway, from Q0 to Q1, it can mean we can go a loop and then go to Q1, and then we can go another loop and end at Q1. But the, the main point is that we start at Q0 and end at Q1. And, well, if you have a look here, here we take the bottom symbol and we, we pop it from the stack and we don't put it back. So indeed, we have a way from Q0 to Q1 where we get rid of the bottom symbol. Namely, if we would do this transition and that transition, then we could get rid of the bottom symbol. So this one is a useful rule, a useful non-terminal symbol. Then the next symbol from Q1 to Q0, that's... It's fast because, as you can see, there's no way back from Q1 to Q0, so there's no way to get rid of any stack symbols in this way. So this one is useless. And then we have um, the next symbol. That's, that's again a useful symbol because, as I said before, we can just take the loop from Q1 to Q1 and get rid of the stack symbol. And now for the A. From Q0 to Q0, let me just go a bit over there. From Q0 to Q0, we are just adding A's to the stack. We are not removing them. So there's no way to get rid of an A on the way from Q0 to Q0. So this one is not useful. Then from Q0 to Q1, there we have loops that consumes A. So this is a useful symbol. From Q1 to Q0, not useful, and here a useful symbol. And if you if you have an algorithm that is uh, used by a machine, the machine will just um, generate all possible rules, and then could remove the not useful variables later. But I just I thought it's faster if I have a look first at which symbols are useful because then I don't have to check all possibilities. So let's um, have a look at the, uh, let's begin with the start symbol. In our new context free grammar, we will of course start with the start symbol. And when we have a start symbol in our grammar, we want to get rid of it. And the same, um, in the same would be in the automaton if we want to get rid of the um, of the stack symbol. So from from the start symbol, we will get a rule where we um, get a new non-terminal symbol that well that resembles a pass through the automaton where we have to get rid of the non-terminal of the the bottom stack symbol and that will be a pass of course from q0 because this is our our initial state and then we would have to try out all possibilities but um, well as i told you before this symbol is not useful so i don't need to try it out so the only possible non-terminal in this case is the one with Q1. So that's, um, let me repeat this. If we have a grammar with the S, with the start symbol, and we are generating a word, we want to get rid of the start symbol to get the, to the word or to the terminal string at the end. And the same is in the automaton when we have the bottom symbol on the stack. When we are consuming a terminal string, we want to, at the end, we want to get rid of the stack symbol because this automaton just accepts words by with an empty stack. 
So, then, let's have a look at the more, uh, at the more, at the simpler rules. Let's begin with this one. We are in the state Q1 and we are doing a transition to Q1. And, well, that's the same as if we had the um, symbol where we are in Q1. In this rule, we are reading the stack symbol. So in this, in this transition, we are reading the stack symbol. So in this rule, we are also want to, uh, we have the stack symbol. And then when, what we have here is, well, a way, the only way from, uh, to get rid of the stack symbol, as I told you before, is from, now from Q1 to Q1, so I don't have much possibilities there. And what we are getting on the right side is the, um, the symbol that we are one trying to read. So in this case, it's just epsilon. So, um, so that means if we have those, uh, this transition that's in the automaton, In the automaton, this transition is when we are done with reading the word and we are just getting rid of the stack symbol. So that resembles this rule where we just have a non-terminal symbol and we are getting rid of it because now we are done. Then the not so easy rule is the next one. Now again, we are in Q1. We want to do a transition. In this rule, we are reading the B, so on the right side, we will get the, the B. And we are not pushing anything onto the stack, so um, we don't get new non-terminal symbols. And now here, we have an A in the transition, so we will have an A in the rule. And now, as I told you before, I normally I would try, had to try out all possible states at this position, but we know we can't get rid of an A where here is a key on the way to Q0, so the only possibility here is another Q1. So, now let's, now we are coming to the more complicated rules, and here I will use a little bit more color. So at the beginning we have here Q0, Then, um, in this transition, we are reading uh, the stack symbol, the bottom symbol from the stack. And that's uh, why we have here a non-terminal symbol that resembles this, uh, this bottom stack symbol. And I will have a transition here. At this position, I would... Well, as I told you before, um, I can I only can get rid of the bottom symbol on the way to Q1. So here will be a Q1 that has nothing to do with anything we have in the transition. But um, normally I would try out all states in this position. But we already know uh, in this case only Q1 makes sense here. Then on the right side. Uh, in the transition, we are reading uh, terminal A, and that's the same as if we are in the grammar and we are generating an A. And now we have we have two symbols that we are po that we are pushing onto the stack, and that means we will get new two new non-terminals on the right side. So for every symbol, we are pushing onto the stack, we will get in the same rule um, the same amount of non-terminal symbols. And in this case, on the left side, we will have a rule that resembles the A and the uh, non-terminal that resembles the A and on the right side, one for the bottom symbol. Um, and then... Well, in the automaton, if we have this transition, we are mu moving from, from Q0 to Q0. 
So that's the same as if in those rules we are already, in this case, we are in Q0. And because, because here I wrote Q1, so this is a this symbol resembles a way through the automaton from Q0 to Q1. We want to end here in Q1. And now what's left to fill out is the place here. And here we just have the same state. Um, well, if you think of it as a way through the automaton, it could be a way from Q0 to Q0, and then from Q0 to Q1 or away from Q0 to Q1 and from Q1 to Q1. And, and if I would have to write down all possibilities, I would have to write two rules um, that are like this, just they just differ in those positions. But as I told you at the beginning, uh, the symbol from this symbol from Q0 to Q0 where I get rid of the A doesn't make sense in this automaton. So I will just add one rule where here will be a Q1. So, and then I don't need to write down, I don't need to try out anything else for this transition. Now for the next transition, again, here will I, here I have a Q0. I want to read the A from the stack because it's the same here. And then, as I told you before, um, here I have to, the only possibility to write a Q1 because uh, I don't have those symbols that would, the other possibility maybe in another automaton. And on the right side, I'm generating the A. Here in the transition, I'm pushing two non-terminal symbols, so in the in the rule, in the equivalent rule, I get two non-terminal symbols, in this case with the A. And then um, those Q1 and this Q1 must be the same. And this Q0 must be the same as here. And then I'm left here with trying out the possibilities, but, well, as I told you, again, I could, I have to try out, I have to put in the same state here, but I won't try out Q0 in this case, because those, then I would get again the non-terminal symbol with Q0 and Q0, which doesn't make sense, so I will just add the one with Q1. And then, now to the last transition I need a rule for. On the left side again, there's a non-terminal symbol with Q0, where I will pop an A from the stack. And the only possibility in this case is uh, Q1 in this position. On the right side, and in the transition, I'm reading nothing, so um, I could just leave this place empty, but I could also write an epsilon here, so just to make it clear for you. And here I only have one non-terminal, that is uh, one stack symbol that's pushed onto the stack. So I will just get one non-terminal symbol in the equivalent rule, again with the A. Uh, in, the, in those transition, I, um, well, this Q1 has to be the same as here and there. And this rule says that I um, made a transition to Q1, so in this case I have to start in Q1 here. And now I have rules, um, maybe if you are used to other kinds of automaton, very strange looking rules. But I have a context-free grammar that accepts the same language as those push-down automaton. And in the same video I will show in the in the next video I will show you an example of how to generate a word with this grammar.